Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Crystal with Essentially Tarot, and I'm back with another <laughs> unboxing and walkthrough. Um, I swear I will get to something different at some point on my channel. Um, I've had a request for um, a video on edging cards and how to do that and what to use, which isn't super original content, but I am still planning on making that because it was requested and you know everyone has a slightly different way of doing things so just because it's already been done doesn't mean that maybe I don't have something to bring to the table I don't know that I do but it's okay we're working on that and I'm going to get together my October deck haul because I still haven't done that either but in the meantime this little package showed up Oop, it doesn't fit in frame this little package showed up on my doorstep um, two days ago now and as you can see I have opened the box but I haven't taken anything out I haven't even peeked it's been killing me inside I was hoping to film this yesterday actually but did not get a chance to so here we are today and you can see it is from Bloodstone Studios um, and let's dig in so we can see exactly what we have here so we have some tissue paper which is nice and Let's see, there is something folded up in this. So I'm going to, oops, sorry, I just bumped the camera. This is folded up in my, my letter. Um, so we have some bookmarks here. And if you're not already guessing what, what this is, it might be giving it away. Here's my other bookmark. Um, here is Rasputin. The Moon. This is from another deck, obviously. A fun little giveaway card. Um, and we all know my fascination with the Moon card, so that's kind of fun that that's the, the bonus card that I happen to get. We have some really fun stickers. Um, again, that kind of gives away what this is, but it's okay. So let me pull out everything that's in here. Because this is the Hieronymus Bosch Tarot. Um, not to be confused with, uh, Los Garabeo has a Bosch Tarot, which is also based on, um, the artist's work. Um, this was a Kickstarter for Bloodstone Studios that I backed. Here is the cool, um, enamel pin that came with it. It also came with, I'm really excited about this, you guys, um, a face mask because those are the times in which we live, right? Um, everyone requires face masks now, so it comes with a really fun Bosch face mask, um, which I think is really cool, and you're not going to see a lot of these floating out there in the universe, right? Um, so that is part of it, and it also came with a reading cloth. This was like a really cool uh, Kickstarter to back because of all of the fun stretch goals that were included with it. So why not let's lay this bad boy out because ooh, it is nice. It is longer than the one that I have down currently, um, but it is the same width. So that's obviously sideways, um, but it's beautiful and it's a really nice, soft, feels like a cotton blend. Um, I can't even catch all of it here in frame, but it's really really nice so this is the reading cloth that came with it here's the top so you can see there's a lot going on so let's bring the deck out it came with a bag we got to vote on the color of the bag it's this beautiful purple and the inside is this silvery gray and let's pull out the deck Ooh, here is the little guidebook um, Ooh, that is some small, 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 small writing. So if you struggle um, with small, <laughs> you might struggle with that. But um, I think there was actually an additional um, larger book that you could back with the Kickstarter. I just did not. So that should be out there if and when this deck is released um, outside of the Kickstarter. So right away, we just have, you know, the major arcana. Here is your write-up for the first card, the Fool, which is actually the Wayfarer. So we have the meaning, um, and then it kind of goes into uh, just more about the card itself, and it finishes up 
over here. Um, just doing a cursory glance, there's, you know, the meaning. There's kind of going into the deeper meaning. There's also some questions involved. And it's talking about, um, you know, where he falls um, in the journey of the card. So as zero in the card deck, the Wayfarer represents the start of all things. So, yeah. And each of them kind of is going along in the same same layout. So those are the majors. And here are, oh, they've changed the suits. So we have, let's, let's do that while we're here, right? We have berries for earth or pentacles. We have birds for air um, or swords. We have skates for water and metal. Oh, we've switched things up. I forgot there were extra suits in this deck. So skates are water and metal. Swords are metal and fire. Vessels are water, so your cups. Books are earth and air. Coins are metal and sins are fire. So interesting that we have berries for earth and coins for metal. So berries are very much more about, um, it says abundance, fertility, harmony, joy, friendship, whereas coins or metal are business, career, success, wealth, money. So your coins are kind of your more typical pentacle suit. Um, try saying that three times as typical pentacle. <laughs> Um, so you're, uh, well, I guess we'll go down. So birds, air, we have movement, travel, personal growth, um, kind of in the realm of swords. And then swords is kind of split into two with books, which is earth and air, knowledge, intelligence, learning. Skates are water and metal. So trouble, difficulty, um, indecision, fun, which is, again, something that I still relate to swords, funnily enough. Um, swords are metal and fire. So skill and ability, conflict, victory, Vessels, water, untamed activity, blessings, sins, and salvation. Books we did, knowledge, intelligence, learning. Coins we did, business, career, success, wealth, money. And then sins are fire, the troubles and desires of the human condition. So now the court cards have also been changed significantly. There are extras there as well. So we have page, knight, baron, prince or princess, queen, king, and ace. Which ace, is, ace as a court card is an interesting concept. Um... So yeah, so there's a lot of extras going on here. So when we get to our suits, um, we have kind of a write-up on what the suits are. We go right into the court cards. So here's your page, here's your knight. Sorry, I realize this is not focusing well because these words are so tiny. Um, but then we have baron, princess, queen, king, and then ace, and then suits of birds. Oh, oh. Interesting. So wait, no numbered cards? I'm perplexed. Maybe not. So this is kind of like a revamping of the system entirely. It's just a totally different system. Let's jump in the cards because obviously those are going to answer the questions that I have right now. So I'm going to take the shrink wrap off of this beautiful box and zoom us in. Give me one moment. Okay, so here we are all zoomed in. Here are your bags. They are really cool. They have uh, kind of like the hand dagger. Um, and it's hard to see what the other one is. Um, but yeah, so those are our bags. Let's flip them over. And it is important to note they are still 78 cards. The interesting thing that's been done here, um, I realized as I was opening them up, They've broken the suits down into additional suits, but kept the same number of cards. So, um, for instance, where we have kind of the swords being broken down into, um, you know, uh, or I should say air being broken down into knowledge and then also being broken down into, I'm trying to find the little write up that I just had, um, uh, movement, travel, personal growth, and then also knowledge, intelligence, learning. They've kind of broken the suits into different pieces of one whole. So yes, they kind of all fit back into the swords um, so that we still have the 78 cards, but we've kind of separated um, the smaller intricacies of the suits into additional suits. Does that make sense? So we're going to see how that works as we go through the cards, obviously. So here we have our Wayfarer, our Fool. Here we have the conjurer or the magician. 
I feel like Bosch's art just lends itself so well to tarot because it's just that combination of weird and fantastical and everything I kind of want in a tarot deck. Mistress of Terror instead of the High Priestess, which is an interesting concept. The Virgin Mother for the Empress. Kings of the East for the Emperor. Here we have the Surgeon. Ooh. That's fun. In place of the Hierophant, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna get thrown off because when name changes, I'm always like, I forget the entire majors. <laughs> it's terrible. My brain like goes into overdrive. Here we have the lovers. It's beautiful. Ooh, we have deception. Interesting. There's a lot going on there. Ignorance. Illumination. Table of Plenty instead of the Wheel of Fortune. So you can see it's it's an interesting take because you have Illumination, which would be nine would be the Hermit, right? Am I, am I wrong? Oh my gosh, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. Um, so a very different take on that, right? even though the hermit is very much about illumination within yourself and, you know, seeking out the darkness in yourself and, and peering behind it and growth and learning and spending time in that uncomfortable, quiet place to kind of better yourself and all that good stuff. There are, there are a lot of people on this card. This is not very hermity at all, is it? Um, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting take on things. But so here we have the table of plenty in place of the wheel of fortune. The flower pusher. Well, if that is not uncomfortably funny, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what is. The barrel boy. So you could really, I mean, you could take this completely outside of what we know about the majors and really work off of this intuitively. Here's death kind of peeking in that door. Paradise. Temptation. Um, again, I like kind of the Adam and Eve vibe of temptation, um, especially since I kind of, you see a lot of Adam and Eve imagery when it comes to the lovers sometimes, uh, which I feel like that still works to maybe some of the darker aspects of the lover card, um, but it also works for the devil, right? Ooh, look at that tower, the river to hell. Interesting. The dreamer. The grail knight. Wow. Yeah, there is some darkness going on in here, isn't there? The Christ child. That'd be our son. The Ascent of the Blessed, or Blessed, depends on how you want to say that. I think that's a perfect card, though, for justice. I mean, judgment, excuse me. And the world. Oop, that was my phone. Sorry, guys. So, yeah, these are, I mean, these are great for intuitive hits, aren't they? I think art obviously is meant to be um, evocative. It's meant to bring up different feelings and emotions depending on the person viewing it. And I think it's the perfect catalyst for something like tarot. And when you have someone like Bosch, whose artwork is so strange and visceral sometimes that I think it makes a great pairing. So here we have the page of berries. Now berries to go back to our little list our um, earth, so abundance, fertility, harmony, joy, friendship. So we have the page offering the berry to the bird. The knight of berries. The baron of berries. The princess of berries. 
and the Queen of Berries, and our King of Berries. And then our Ace of Berries. So you can see now we go to birds. So that's our suit of berries. It's literally just the quartz and an ace. Um, so very, 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 very different structure and one that I think is going to be difficult for people like me who rely a little bit on the numerology of tarot. It kind of takes away from that, that system. So it is one that, again, either you can read intuitively or really pull the book out to kind of help you understand the process through the journey of the tarot. So, I mean, they do break down, um, you know, page is the most basic understanding of the suit. Knight is ambitious, active member of the suit. Baron is the lowest octave of the suit. Prince or princess is mastery of the suit. Queen is mature female mastery of the suit. King is mature male mastery of the suit. And ace is the all encompassing meaning of the suit. So it does break that down for you. So now we are on to birds, which is air, movement, travel, personal growth. So that aspect of what we would consider the swords. Yeah, these are fun. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to dive into the book first or if I want to hang out with these and just see what I get just going through them on my own. Hmm. I'm not, I'm not sure. The queen of birds has an owl on her head. Oh my. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. And here's the ace of birds, which I can see, you know, when we're talking about movement, travel, um, there's a lot of that going on in this image. You can see, like, you can almost imagine those birds kind of funneling in and out. Um, so yeah, that I can see that. So here we are at books, um, and books are earth and air. So this is the knowledge, intelligence, learning aspect of the swords, if you will. Whoops, as I just smack the cards out. Um, so here you have the page of books. The Knight of Books. The Baron of Books. The Prince of Books. I'm not going to keep reading them. This is Queen and King. And then your Ace. So again, we're talking about knowledge, intelligence, learning. Yeah, I could see that. Although I do find the music notes on this person's butt to be particularly funny. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Here's the page of coins. Now again, coins are talking about, um, you know, business, career, success, wealth, money. This is really the more um, material side of the earth or the pentacle suit, obviously. Fascinating. Here's the knight of coins, stealing that guy's wallet or purse, if you will. The baron of coins. The prince. The queen. Look at this guy. He's got like no body. Those are just head and legs. And the king. Interesting. See, and then this is what I kind of like about the weirdness of, of this art style is, you know, when you find this king of coins coming up, you know, who are you considering the king of coins? Are we considering it this gentleman here? Or is it this little guy down here? Um, who knows? You know, I guess that could change depending on what you see or what you're feeling. And here is the Ace of Coins. Okay, so now we're on to, um, why am I having such a hard time reading that? Oh, Sin of Envy. Oh, got it. It changes. Okay. I like that. So these are your sins. So this is the troubles and desires of the human condition in the realm of fire. So 
kind of your your problematic wands. <laughs> so we have the sin of envy. And then we have gluttony. Greed. Lust. Pride. I love that she has a lampshade on her head. Or I'm assuming, a oh, maybe it's not a lampshade. <laughs> it's not a lampshade. It's her head covering from behind, I understand. Look like a lampshade. Sloth. And Wrath. Is that the last one? Was that seven? I lost track. Let's see. Yep. Ooh, look at me. So now we move on to skates. And skates are, again, water and metal. So trouble, difficulties, indecision, and fun. So here's the page of skates. He seems to be having some trouble. Knight. Baron. Prince. Queen. Woo. And King. And then the ace of skates, which is just a skate. So I see, obviously, using the seven deadly sins, we've borrowed from some of the other suits to incorporate those seven deadly sins. So that's kind of what's going on there with the structure. So that's interesting. So now we have swords, which are metal and fire. So skill and ability, conflict and victory. So this is actually a really cool way to um, learn some of the associations when it comes to suits within suits, right? Does that make sense? So like the more watery aspect of fire, what does that look like? Or the more fiery aspect of earth, what does that look like? This is a really cool way to kind of play with that and get a feel for that. So here we have the page of swords and the knight, oops, we're sliding. The baron, the prince, it looks like a funnel, a walking funnel. The queen. And the king. And then the ace. Okay. And then last but not least, I think, right, is vessels. So water, untamed activity, blessings, sins, and salvation. So here is the page of vessels, the knight, the baron, the prince, the queen, the king, and last but not least, the eight. Ace of vessels, not eight, ace. So yeah, a very different structure than your traditional deck. I'm gonna zoom out a bit so we can talk about the cards as far as the cardstock. Okay, so as far as the cardstock goes, it is um, a thinner cardstock. Um, it is a linen cardstock. It's kind of a lightly textured linen. It's not quite as textured as say, um, Pagan Otherworlds. Can you see that? I don't know if that's gonna really, ooh, there you go, you can see it kind of better there. So it is a textured linen cardstock. It is nice and thin, which for me as a riffle shuffler, um, I do enjoy. It is a little slippery, but honestly, it's not the most slippery that I have felt. Oops, as I, as I do that. Um, but yeah, it is a little slippery. So it is one that you're gonna be, you know, a little careful with because you're going to throw cards. Um, but I have a feeling these are going to riffle shuffle so well. So yeah, I'm really excited to riffle shuffle these. Ooh, yeah. They riffle. You could see that was a fast riffle. Like they were, I was losing a couple there, but they riffle shuffle really, really nicely. And they are nice. And again, I think they're like just the right amount of slippery. They're not all over the place slippery, but they've got a nice slip to them. They feel 
again, thin, but they feel really well made. I don't know. They're kind of like the perfect cardstock for me. I'm, I, I prefer a thinner, sturdier cardstock, if that makes sense. <laughs> a thinner, more quality cardstock. But look at that beautiful color palette. So yeah, that is the Hieronymus Bosch Tarot by Bloodstone Studios. Um, yeah, I like it. I think it's very interesting. I think that um, it's going to be a really fun one to work with. Again, even just um, intuitively, I feel like there's so much that you can get just from any given card. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited about it. It, it hits all my, my check marks for quality. It hits all my check marks for quirkiness. Um, and I'm excited to get to know it. So thank you for hanging out with me, guys. This has been a lot of fun. I've been really excited for this deck to come in. Um, and I was excited to share it with you. So please, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, I've been really bad about uploading videos. I was uploading about twice a week. Um, life has kind of gotten in the way and you know, now it's kind of the busy season for everybody. And you know, so I've fallen off a little bit, but I do try to at least get one video out a week, bare minimum. <laughs> so I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out. Bye.